In this recording, we are going to start our discussion on activity-based costing. But before we discuss the detailed concept of activity-based costing, let's first consider the basic ideas we have learned so far about the conventional costing methods. So conventional costing distinguishes between variable and fixed cost, right? And when I say conventional costing, I mean marginal and absorption costing. So it distinguishes between the variable costs and the fixed costs. And typically, it assumes that variable costs uh, vary with the number of units of output in total, right? Whereas the fixed cost remains constant. That's the behavior of cost in total. However, in per unit, conventional costing assumes that variable cost per unit remains constant and fixed cost per unit decreases when level of activity increases, right? So that's a typical assumption. But this normally is the oversimplification of how costs actually behave. For example, variable cost per unit is assumed to be constant but it often increase at high levels of production where for example over time premiums might have to be paid or for example when material becomes a limiting factor then you have to buy it at a premium or a higher rate right and for fixed costs they are usually fixed only over a certain range of activity and often stepping up as additional manufacturing resources are employed to allow high volumes to be produced. Now, if we specifically talk about the variable cost per unit, this can at least be mired and the sum of the variable cost per unit is the marginal cost per unit, right? The marginal cost is the additional cost incurred when one more unit of output is produced. However, you need to keep in mind that there has always been a problem dealing with fixed production costs such as factory rent, heating, supervisors, cost and so on, right? So making a unit does not cause more fixed cost, yet production cannot take place without these costs being incurred, right? So to say that the cost of producing a unit consists of marginal costs only will understate the true cost of the production and this can lead to, you know, problems. For example, if the selling price is based on a markup on cost, then the company need to make sure that all production costs are covered by the selling price. Additionally, if you focus too much on marginal cost and exclusively on marginal cost, this may cause companies to overlook important savings that might result from better controlled fixed costs, right? Why are we discussing these conventional methods of costing? Because we have to compare them with activity-based costing, right? Now, the traditional absorption costing if we take absorption costing specifically in account, so the conventional absorption costing approach to dealing with fixed overheads is to assume that various cost types can be lumped together and a single overhead absorption rate can be derived. So the absorption rate is usually presented in terms of overhead cost per labor hour, or machine hour etc this approach is likely to be an oversimplification but of course it has an advantage of being relatively quick and easy right but as we know that because of the changing business environment there are now many different type of overheads which are related to production especially the fixed overheads which are caused by many different activities so, for example, inspection, for example, setup cost, etc. So, these are incurred because of many different activities. And, you know, the idea of absorption costing is to take all the costs, whether it's setup cost or it's quality assurance cost or whether it's the setup cost or maybe it is the cost of rent. So, all the costs should be grouped together and then calculate single overhead absorption rate based on a single level of activity. But the problem is, that because the overheads are derived because of many different types of activities, the idea of absorption costing then becomes of limited use. So what is activity-based costing? Activity-based costing is an extension of absorption costing, specifically considering what 
causes each type of overhead category to occur. So it identifies the different activities and the quantity of those activities which are incurring different type of overheads category. For example, setup cost, for example, quality assurance cost, for example, inspection cost, for example, rent and other overheads, etc. So it focuses on what causes each type of overhead to be incurred. That is what the cost drivers are. What are the activities which drive the cost? So that's the basic concept of activity-based costing. Now let's compare activity-based costing with the traditional absorption costing in an exam-focused way. So absorption costing allocates a greater part of overheads to the high volume products naturally and smaller portion of overheads cost to low volume products. Why? Because the basis of overhead absorption rate are volume related and which most of the times are machine hours or labor hours. So greater proportion of overheads which are many different types of overheads so greater proportion of the total overheads will go to the product with higher volumes and smaller portion of the overheads will go to the lower volume products regardless of the fact that maybe the low volume product was causing more activities and hence more overheads, right? So activity-based costing solves this problem and it tries to overcome the problem by allocating overheads to products according to the cost drivers so according to what drives the cost and then you know charging the cost according to the consumption of those cost drivers by individual product right now for your understanding we now have a diagram on the screen so traditional absorption costing uses a single basis of absorbing all overheads into the cost units for a particular production department or cost center. So all different type of overheads, production setup, machine costs, supervisor salary, machine repairs, inspection, and the list can go on. So all these costs are combined together as the total overhead cost for one particular department. And then these total overheads are absorbed into the production by calculating one single overhead absorption rate, for example, on machine hours basis. Now, the idea of using machine hours as the basis of absorption for machining cost is all right, but why machine hours are used to absorb the overheads like production setup cost or supervisor salary? Machine hours are not even linked to these overheads, but absorption costing ignores this fact and combine the overhead cost and calculate a single basis of absorption and that is why eventually high cost will go to high volume products and low cost will be absorbed to low volume products right but when we compare it with activity based costing each type of overhead is absorbed using a different basis depending on the cost driver so this means that we have to calculate multiple overhead absorption rates to come to the cost per unit of a product. So it is more work, but it is more accurate and more realistic, right? So from this diagram, each different cost, for example, production setup cost, machining cost, supervisor salary are being absorbed using separate cost drivers so for production setup cost, the cost drivers are number of production setups. For machining cost, machine hours are seems to be relevant because more machine hours, more repairs and machine oil will be used. And then total labor hours are linked to supervisor salary. So these are the cost drivers used by activity-based costing to basically identify what drives each of these three types of cost. In activity-based costing, different types of overheads are grouped together and they are called as cost pools. So for each cost pool, a different overhead absorption rate will be calculated based on its relevant cost driver. So for example, in this example, three different overhead absorption rates will be calculated 
and then the overheads will be absorbed into the cost units. Now, why do we even need activity-based costing when it is a lot of work? So the need of activity-based costing basically arises because of some very important reasons. The first one being that there is a increase in the proportion of overhead cost in the total costs because of the use of advanced machinery and technology. So because of the use of, you know, greater innovative technologies, these new different type of overheads are being incurred in a modern business environment like inspection cost and setup cost, etc. Right. So these are modern concepts, but these are increasing the proportion of overhead cost in total cost and the variety of overheads are also increasing. So we need more analysis of these activities and different type of overheads. Hence, the greater need for activity based costing because it analyzes all the cost drivers separately. Then because the product, you know, production is getting complex and there is increase in product range where all products are consuming different amounts of overheads and most of the overheads are not even volume related anymore. So we need a proper extensive analysis in the form of activity based costing. Then the cost of information in today's world because of the greater use of technology is decreasing. So collecting information, analyzing information is easier than in the old time. Similarly, there is a very high increase in non-volume related support activities like machine setups, like inspections, like quality control procedures, etc. Right? So that's why we need activity-based costing. Now, these kind of topics that why activity-based costing is needed can be tested as objective test questions. So you need to prepare for these kind of topics as well. Theoretical aspects are equally important as numerical aspects, right? So maybe you'll get a two mark question, two mark objective test on calculating activity based cost per unit of some product, or you may get an objective test question, which is completely theory based and discussing the need for activity based cost, right? So these topics are equally important.